Proverbs 13, 12. Hope deferred maketh the heart sick, but when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. Hope is assurance of a future event. It is expectation of something desired. Most people have little hope in the future, and our present society is causing that to fade drastically. Why do people riot and loot as is going on right now? It isn't for a cause, but it is anger that has come about because they have no hope. They see the world as about to be destroyed. Listen, according to this uh, proverb, before hope can be delayed, must, uh, one must first possess it. It's not a wish for something, but something that has been guaranteed. For instance, people buy life insurance to guarantee the future of a loved one if they should die. That is hope. Many hope they are going to heaven, and I use that in the connection of wish, but they don't know. And so what we understand is you can know and have a real hope based on scriptures. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The verse we find here in Proverbs ought to educate and encourage us. All that we hope for doesn't always come when expected. But when it does, it's like a tree of life. That tree represents life both presently and eternally. Hopelessness comes when people put their inspect expectations on vain things rather than sure things. I think of the widow of Zarephath as she was given hope by Elijah. Though at first she doubted him, but once she caught the hope that he gave her, she fed Elijah and her son and herself for many days. So many, however, are like her and are gathering sticks to cook their last meal. God in his omniscience sends encouragers that we may act in faith, which is a hope of a sure thing. Since hopelessness is so destructive and painful, a good man will work to keep those around him full of hope, like his wife, his children, his employees, and his friends. Ecclesiastes says it this way, chapter 4, verse 9 through 12. Two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow, but woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him. Again, if two lie together, they have heat, but how can one be warm alone? And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. We have a great, marvelous privilege to bring hope to others as we are with them. Solomon taught the wisdom of keeping citizens filled with hope, lest they become discouraged and desperate enough to revolt. Proverbs 16:15 says, In the light of the king's countenance is life, and his favor is a cloud of the latter rain. Oh, things would have been so much different if his son had listened. He wouldn't have been so harsh on the people, and the kingdom would have remained whole. He never learned that sweetness will bolster others rather than sourness. Proverbs 20, verse 28 says, Mercy and truth preserve the king, and his throne is upholden by mercy. You know, hope is so important that a good educator knows that it's not the methods of teaching that are so important, but the instilling within a student the hope of victory in that subject. I remember my very first day in zoology. I was a sophomore in college, and uh, the teacher came in and told us what we were going to do for the year. He told us that at the end of the year, he would be placing pieces of animals and insects on uh, little uh, little boards all throughout the classroom. He said there would be about 30 different 
pieces like that. And uh, it might be a leg, it might be an arm, it might be the stomach, it might be anything. But he said, you will then identify that particular uh, animal that it came from. You will also be able to tell its, uh, its species, its phylum, all those classification things, and also be able to tell its function. And I looked and I thought, oh my goodness, failure is coming along. And then he said this, don't worry about it. He said, you will in this class learn those things. And you'll be surprised at the end of the semester what you have gotten. You know he was right. This hope is the basis, I believe, of not provoking a child's wrath. You know, the Bible says in Ephesians 6, 4, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. You know, one can constantly criticize their child to where they feel hopeless and useless. Or one can encourage and give confidence that they can make any goal in life. Oh, how we need to understand the importance of having good hope and finding our hope in the Lord Jesus Christ, our hope in the Word of God. May God bless you in that today.